بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتاب العزيز والفرقان الحميد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله اصطفى آدم ونوحا وآل إبراهيم وآل عمران على العالمين صدق الله العلي العظيم My dear respected brothers and elders, mothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, by the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we just uh, did a takmil of the Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it and give us more tawfiq, inshallah. Say ameen. And alhamdulillah, through his fadl, uh, we are in the company of uh, Sheikh Muhammad Amin Kulwariya, who needs no introduction. But a little bit, inshallah, Sheikh told me just to take one minute. But honestly, if I was to take uh, more than an hour, his, an introduction would not be enough to him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, keep him, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to benefit from him, inshallah. Say ameen. So this ayah that I recited, you know, when I look at, mashallah, uh, you know, the way our ummah is, that the accolades uh, that we have, we look at the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and sahaba. So the company that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us is what gives us value. And if you look, mashallah, at you know, the life of Sheikh Amin and his father, Mawlana Musa Kulwariya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his father, Mawlana Musa, to be a, a catalyst for bringing deen and bringing elders and ulama and the akabirin and the deen to England. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like his father, also accepted him to bring deen and become a receptacle of nur and guidance to be brought to the United States, North America. And mashallah, you know, their words are not enough for the fadl uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed upon him and his institution through which everyone is benefiting. May Allah also give us so good to benefit from that, inshallah. Say ameen. So inshallah, without further ado, inshallah, I would like all of us to, inshallah, uh, put our phones away for a little bit and focus and listen to Sheikh's advice inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Uh, 
uh, the gift of being cleansed is all about from uh, sins and <laughs> everything else. And this is a unique divine gift that Allah Taala gives us uh, at the time of Eid, the night of Eid. Uh, the night of Eid was also a night of Ibadah, as also mentioned in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Hadith. Anyway, what I want to talk to you about is, is basically two ideas uh, this evening. One idea is the idea of Ishtiba, and the other idea is the idea of Inaba. <laughs> Ishtiba is a very high ranking Daraja and Maqam, very high ranking status in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something that only the divine can give. That's called the Ishtiba. Uh, being chosen and being selected by Allah is called the Ishtiba. This requires Allah's product. This requires Allah's acceptance. And this requires Allah's choosing that who are the chosen ones in the world? <coughs> People of Makkah have ideas that they are the best, that they are the chosen ones, and so on. So we think we do something, therefore we are now deserving of some rank. We do Tarawi, we appreciate we do Tarawi, but we feel that within ourselves, I come to have something, I deserve something. We do the Hajjud, MashaAllah. We feel internally that we deserve something. I've accomplished something. That's just how human beings are. I mean, that's just how. Intrinsically, there's nothing wrong with it. Only when it comes to making that a point of kibar and looking down on other people, you become a harvest, mashallah, and you're special. And you should be special. You should think you're special, but not at the expense of thinking low and thinking other people to be lower than you, because that's killer, that's arrogance. We don't do that. Likewise, if you become an alim, if you become a mufti, if you become whatever, pious person, you don't commit sin, and sometimes you're holier than thou, then this creeps into you. <coughs> creeps into you. An idea that you are now chosen. No, your mind doesn't say this. It doesn't articulate it. But that definitely is the feeling, because that is what religion does. That is what piety does. So we have to be careful how we choose our niya and how we think of ourselves. So piety means you never think of yourself as higher than anyone else. That is the true taqwa. <coughs> that is the true taqwa. Where, alhamdulillah, you do this, but you know it's only Allah's tawfiq that gives you the ability to do whatever it is that you do. Hopefully all good, inshallah. But this is one maqam which we can talk of a bit later. The other maqam is that Allah chooses you because He wants to choose you. Where there is no nafs, there is no niya, there is no recognition of the self. Allah chooses you. وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَرُ مَا كَانَ لَهُمُ الْخِيرَةِ Yeah, man, Allah says, they have no choice in choosing and selecting. This is pure divine fadl and divine selection where nobody can write a criterion for this. What's the criterion to be a Nabi? Allah's choice. And whose hands is Allah's choice in? His. Allah chooses whomever He wants. And in the human history, this, is, oh, this has always been a constant struggle, attention, uh, confusion, because people don't see this person to be chosen. The chosen one. They don't see the qualities that are in the world of leadership. Why is this one a leader? No Hanisa. Respect, respectable, noble person in the community, but he was never seen as a leader. 
Allah chose him. Allah gave him wahi. Allah made him go out to everybody on the planet, here, there, everywhere. 950 years. People objected this. How can we follow you when the low life people, people who have nothing, no status, no money, no prestige, no honor, people who are downtrodden, they follow you. So if there's a criteria for leaders, there are people who are high ranking, people who are good in the eyes of the community, they follow you. But we don't see anybody like this. Who are your followers? All your followers, they're nothing. They have no money, no honor, they, they're pressing. But this doesn't count in the eyes of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa chooses because He wants Nuh alayhi salam to be a Nabi. What's the criterion? Divine choice. <coughs> Why is Nuh a Nabi? Because Allah wants him to be. If society wants somebody to be a Nabi, can that happen? No. This, by the way, applies to piety also. So don't assume that because you're pious, you'll be chosen for something. It doesn't work that way. It never has worked. Anyway, so being chosen and selected by Allah is what this part of this ayah is saying. Allah Whomever Allah wills, Allah chooses. And that chosen one then, dis then displays all the attributes and the qualities of being chosen. And what is that? Number one, humbleness. Number two, no judgment on anyone. No judgment on anyone. Never mind the sinner, the kafir. Sin, honestly, is you shouldn't go near it. The Muslims send their school and their ship. So a Nabi is not allowed to judge a mushrik or a kafir. Why? Because Allah chooses him. Because he's chosen, he's very humble. He's very gracious. He's very understanding of human weakness. Human Hmm. What do you call it? Fallibility. Human failure. They know that human beings, although they have a choice, sometimes they'll make the wrong choice and then uh, we won't implore the divine to come and punish them. Unless there's a divine order. Nuh and Salaam may go up, but there's a divine order. So what he was given to know that no one else will believe in your community. So if that's the case, then obviously there's nothing else to do. And then Allah gives the order which he gave for the flood and the building of the ship, etc. But as long as there is hope, the Nabi will continue to strive and struggle. A Nabi will never give up on failures and losers. They don't rule out human beings because they're failures. No. The one Sahabi came to the Prophet in Medina and said, Ya Rasulullah, you came to me so many times in Makkah. Countless number of times you came to me in Makkah and said, Please believe, please believe, please believe. You never dismissed me because I wasn't believing. You had faith in me. You didn't lose hope in me. After many hundreds of times now in Medina and here now alhamdulillah. Through your persistence, through your patience, through your belief in me, I am now alhamdulillah Muslim. Who does this? Someone who's chosen by Allah. You can't do this if you're not chosen by Allah. If you're not chosen by Allah, you will pray because yeah, I, I, I spoke to the guy. Can you talk to the Yeah, I spoke to him just now. How much do you speak about? I spoke to him once today. Or maybe I spoke to him twice. Or maybe three times. Then I gave up because he's a loser. I gave up because that person's a loser. Now you speak to one person, one person. That's enough. 
You will run out of patience. In fact, you don't have patience in the, in the, in the first place. Because you're holier than thou. You're not chosen. If you're chosen, you will never believe anyone in front of you is a loser. It's not possible. It's not part of their job description. They have to maintain dignity and honor. And they have to maintain <coughs> dua for all. It's because of Allah's compassion. Because they're in sync with Allah. They're in sync with His Rahmah, with His Tawfiq. They know that even their own Tawfiq is through Allah. As Shuaim says, Ma Tawfiq is only with Allah and through Allah because of Allah. I have nothing to do with my own ibadah. So they can't be holier than thou. So the yashtabiyyina is a word in Arabic that some of you know. It means to pluck and choose and select the best fruit on the tree from the best tree in the orchard. So Allah looks at mankind and he chooses from the best. And from the best, he chooses the best. But that comes with his Mashiach. Okay, with his now, Mashiach, his will. That he wants to choose this one. Because this one is now going to be capable of representing my order. And representing me within human beings. Working within human beings is an impossible task. It's not a difficult task. It is an impossible task. There's the proof. The proof's in your marriage, dear brothers and sisters. You think you can work with your spouse? You know, I've tried. How long? Only one day. And then it's just calm to love. Yeah, we just talk, we drive, we make it work. But really, there's nothing there. A few days of pleasure here and there, but that's about it. Why? Because the nature of human beings is that human beings are always in a state of dispute, argumentation. What kind of insanu? Akhtar shayin jadala. Very clear. Insan is the most debating species. He's always in a mode of debating, right? Especially by Islam. Oh, do we love debating my son? SubhanAllah, we love debating my son. Once Islamic issue comes to the table, that's it. We go off our rockers and we say, no, this is my opinion. So we love debating about Islam. Why? Because that's what the devil wants us to do. Shaitan loves to misguide. And the fruit of misguidance is constant debate. Constant argumentation. Yeah, okay, something about the dunya, this issue, this issue, this money, this. But the, the most, hmm, the most important debate, which is debate of Islam, is because of the nafs. We love it. We tell, we love telling people you're wrong. But the ambiya, they're not made like this. They're made to be very humble. One of the reasons that, you know, the knowledge of Laylatul Qadr was lifted was what? The Prophet <coughs> came out from his Fujr al Mubarakah, came out from his room with the intention of informing the Sahaba the exact date of Laylatul Qadr. Right? Then he says, on the way, to the Muslim, on the way, you've got three steps. <laughs> if you know the Muslim, then number one, if you know where the Prophet is saying, it is three steps away from the Muslim. So within those three steps, the Prophet said, I heard two Sahabi arguing, and then Allah lifted that knowledge from my heart. You see how people don't debate? Especially by Islam. So Allah, the Prophet said, Maybe it's better for you that you don't know, so that you can search. But what I'm saying is that every time there's a debate, be careful, don't use Islam as a weapon. Don't use Islam as a weapon against your wife, against your husband, against your children, 
against your mother, father, any relative, don't use Islam as a weapon against any other Muslim. Islam is not a weapon. Islam is a Rahmah. What does Rahmah do? It bring people together. Right? Once the Ummah uses the Islam as a weapon, that's it, finished for us. The devil doesn't need to do anything. He just sits there in the back smoking his cigar with his feet up. And then, my God, look at these idiots. Total morons. They love debating about Islam, making more, more confusion because they love Islam. The Nabi comes to reform people and to bring people's hearts together. The Nabi doesn't come to sow enmity and discord and hatred and animosity. And the Nabi doesn't come to tell people you can hold grudges. Why? Because this is the maqam of ishtibah, being chosen. Allah chooses whomever he wants it. Whom does he choose? The people in whom he sees rahmah. The people in whom he sees the wakul. The people in whom he sees humbleness and politeness and kindness and compassion and accommodation. The Prophet said, He uses the word Sabha. I have been sent with a tradition which is straight and accommodating, very vast, very broad, very accommodating. Where Sharia, <coughs> alhamdulillah, is so vast, it is so broad with the four madai, you don't need to debate anything. You don't need to fight about any issue. Whether it's moon siding or it's a it doesn't matter. Islam is accommodating. It has rahmah. All you have to do is find a qualified person to ask, and that's it. Then what's the problem? That's your job. You can't go to the books yourself. If you do, you'll make me mislead out of it. So what do you do? You say, Samaha. Islam is very accommodating. And this is how we've been historically very accommodating in Masai, in issues, in difference in opinion. But because this Ummah is representing the Rahmah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why. So when you follow the chosen one, who is the Prophet, then you get a very secure, safe society where people don't hate each other. People don't backbite. People don't mistrust other people. People have good opinion about other people so that other people have a good opinion about you. People listen to what people say. They don't just dismiss other people's arguments and you know issues because they don't agree with me. Well, the, the, the person in front of you, they don't agree with you here. This is a stalemate. Right? How, how are you going to accommodate and live with each other if you don't listen? And if you don't accommodate, and even, even if you don't acknowledge, he has a point of view. <laughs> That's how Ishtiba works. The chosen one is going to be representing Allah's Rahmah, Allah's Maghfirah. The chosen one will always want to deliver people from hell. That's his job. I don't want this one to go to hell. I want to save him. So I'll do everything to save him. I won't do anything to push him into hell. This is the attitude of those who follow the chosen one. Now if you're not chosen, then what are you doing? Are you doing? No. Then Allah gives a formula for those who are not chosen. It's such a beautiful prescription. It's such a wonderful formula that from the select chosen one, they're there, wherever they are. We don't know their macaw, how high they are with Allah. Knows. But for us, Allah gives hope and says he dies, he chooses who he wants, but what he, he dies, yahdi. Wa yahdi ilayhi wa yameen, he dies those who are in search of hidayah. You know, he guides those who are willing to be guided. He guides those who turn to him, Inaba. 
Ibrahim is always constantly, constantly, constantly turning to Allah for guidance, for dua, for hidayah, for everything. So likewise here Allah says that those who are chosen, they are chosen. Their akhlaq are superior and we should follow them, not follow on us. But those who are not chosen, they still have a way forward. And they can be rightly guided if they turn to Allah if they have inaba. <coughs> so what's the process of inaba? How do you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You follow the prescriptions of the Quran. Now I can <coughs> mention a few of them, so it's bad. Ibn Bin Asharim Yastakirun. That in the morning hours they seek forgiveness. Those who turn to Allah and those who are in inaba, what do they do? They seek forgiveness in the morning. Forgiveness from what? From their sins. From their own sins. Again, they're not judging other people. If you wake up early in the morning, the Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, comes down to the uh, first heaven and he announces, Is there anyone who's seeking forgiveness so I can forgive him? So these people, Allah says, a description of these people who are with Allah and they have taqwa, what do they do? They seek forgiveness in the morning so that they are close to Allah Allah is close to their close to Allah and they they, they they want to repent and then a sign of inaba they always turning turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is another word and now what else do they do so on one side in their private lives they are sincere that they ask Allah to forgive them when no one else is looking no one else knows what they're doing. But in the day, they are generous. That in their wealth, they're the right. They, they, they know that, that the other people, people who ask them for donations, and they, they have a right. And they, they also entitled. The mahroom, the one who is now deprived, he has he's entitled to the money that other people have. Not in the kind of socialist sense, I think. Not in that, no, no, no. We're not talking about the communist or socialist. We're talking about that intrinsically in their minds, they know that you know, I have money and I should share. So sharing is caring. And they give, and they give, and they give. So this is how you have now enough that turning back to God. And then there are other values. <coughs> That they will look into themselves to see the signs of Allah in them. Then it's contemplation, meditation, relaxing, making the think and that there's so much hype now about meditation now in this material world, in the corporate world, and <coughs> they're making tons and tons of money through meditation. And we've had this for centuries. We've always been told to think for fear and trust in ourselves, Sadrim Ayatina Kilafrafi To sit down in a calm place, make bigger and think. That's what I mean, think. You know, if you think you have to make money, but it's think that who am I? <coughs> what am I doing? What's the purpose of my life? Am I doing enough? Just think. Don't you see in yourself that there are so many reasons and proofs of Allah's existence? That he allows you to think, he allows you to contemplate, he allows you to meditate, and he allows you to become close to him by thinking, pondering, by reflecting. These are all values, not like Islamic. We've lost them because people say this is all Sufi stuff. It's not Sufi stuff. It is purely Islamic. If you don't have time to think about you and Allah's creation, then you are deprived simply because somebody has a label on it. Why are you listening to the labels? Listen to what the Quran says. And in yourselves, don't you see, don't you reflect, don't you think? Who are you? What's in you? Why are you? What are you doing? What's the purpose of your life? Think about you. <coughs> One of the unfortunate uh, misconcerns out there 
Yeah, we don't matter. We, we, we worry about everybody else. We worry about everybody else. This person's not doing this, the woman is not doing this, uh, we're not united, but we never worry about ourselves. And the Quran warns us. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالنَّبِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ أُولَئِكَ هُمْ الْفَاسِقُونَ Don't become like those who forget Allah. Because if you do that, you will become like those whom Allah made them forget themselves. فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ Allah will make you forget you. You worry about everybody else in the Ummah. Your spouse, your children, your family members, everybody else. You worry about your next door neighbor, you worry about people who come to the masjid, you worry about people who don't come to the masjid. But then Allah says, if you do all that and you forget to mention Allah, then Allah will make you forget you. As a result, it's a punishment. But you don't have five minutes for you? It's a reminder of the highest order. So we should really spend time with ourselves. So we have martial day. It's a good thing. Quality time with the family. It's a wonderful thing. Having quality time with the family. Quality time with the children. If you don't spend quality time with your children at the end of the day, your spouse is mad for you, and say, what are you doing for Spend some quality time with you. How about some quality time with Allah? Do you ever think that Allah also needs quality time with him? This is what this ayah says. Another ayah that speaks about the Muslim's need to think about himself so that he's in sync with Allah subhanahu wa So this is also inaba. This is also turning towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. Okay. So there are many ways to seek guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salat, Sawm, Zakat, Hajj, Zikr, reciting the Quran, doing good deeds, having a good aqeedah, belief in Allah, belief in His names and attributes, thinking of Allah, thinking in the sense of His names and attributes, remembering Allah's names and attributes. Invest in our thinking about Allah, thinking about the Rasul, invest in thinking about all the ni'am, the gifts that Allah has given us. Enumerate them one by one. Look at the ni'am Allah has given you in your body, your limbs, your organs. The Prophet said that when you wake up in the morning, you should give sadqa for every limb and organ in the body that is safe. And they call it 360. The Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, how can we give sadaqah? We don't have that kind of money. He said, no. Sadaqah is when you say, Subhanallah, that's a sadaqah. Or a chukha. Say, Subhanallah, it's a chukha. But he said, where, where does this come from? There's no way in economics is there value for saying, Subhanallah, to help the economy. The Prophet said, Sadaqah is to say Subhanallah, and Subhanallah is a Sadaqah. You go figure that as a mathematics only equation. Don't read Adam Smith, see if he may have any thing to add to this. Probably not. Yeah. How is saying Subhanallah a Sadaqah? So here the Prophet shows the sign of our track, I mean, this is a footnote. The Prophet is saying, you don't need money to be generous. Generosity comes from the heart where you're somehow accommodating. You can be generous with your talk, that you accommodate people in your talk. You can be accommodating in your dua. You can be accommodating in your zikr. You can be generous. The Prophet said that uh, anyone who helps his brother break a fast with half a date, now how much? I don't know, he had nice iftars. That is iftar, Allah gave us barakah. <coughs> In those days, they had no food. So when someone has no food and you come to the masjid and you know your brother here next to you, he doesn't have food in his house, because I know he's a poor man, he probably doesn't even have a date. So that you come into the masjid with one date and you share that one date with your brother next door, that is sabakah. That is generosity of the highest order. 
which human civilization should appreciate, that it doesn't cost you money to be generous. What does it cost? It costs you an open heart. It costs you accommodation. It costs you belief in Allah's rahmah and Allah's birth. And I'll follow that. Again, okay, going off track again. You've got that again. The food of one person is enough for two. And the food for two people is enough for four, and so on and so forth. So I'm saying that there, there are many ways to address the idea of inaba. That when you come towards Allah, which is what inaba means, to come towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah gives you guidance. وَيَهْدِي إِلَيْهِ مَيْدُنِي So, either you have guidance by following someone whom Allah has chosen, and that will be the Nabi, or you seek guidance by performing these good deeds, all these deeds and values, holding these values which I just mentioned. And there are many, many more. The whole of Islam uh, is about inaba. Turn towards Allah's path, and Allah's path takes you to Jannah. So this is what I would like to, inshallah, address for them this evening, that we do have a lot of hope. We must carry hope. We cannot be pessimistic, because that's the shaitan. Don't say the ummah is useless. Don't say that. For Allah's sake, don't say the ummah is lost. That we're losers, we're not united. Don't say that. Because it doesn't fit you. You're not a Nabi. Only a Nabi can say that, and a Nabi never said that. So who are you to say that? Because we don't have the economic policy. We're not united. I don't know. You ever heard of the Republicans and Democrats? Are they united? Hmm? Hmm? Ever heard of Russia? Ever heard of India? No one's united on politics. It's not possible. Get that said. What you're united on is Islam. Every Muslim, alhamdulillah, sincerely believes in the five pillars. They're united on the five pillars. What more unity do you want than a whole ummah to be united on a religion? That's unity. That's unity. So don't say the ummah is lost. Don't say the ummah is useless. Don't say that. You don't have the right to say that. It is not your ummah. Whose ummah is it? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's his ummah. He never gave up on the ummah. Why are you giving up on the ummah? Who are you? That is sacrilegious. That is profanity at the worst. So don't be judge, jury, and execution. Believe in the rahmah of Allah, believe in the compassion of the Prophet and believe in the hope of the Ummah. That's your Islam. That is enough. Get this aqeelah correct, you'll be optimistic, you'll be happy that you are Muslim and others are Muslim with you. So don't be holy to that. And don't say that, uh, that they're not like this, you're not like Who are you the judge? You're not the judge. Allah says, Maliki with Deen. Allah is going to be the judge. And He'll judge you too. So before Allah judges you harshly, you better judge people nicely here. Al Rahman, Ya Rahmu, Al Rahmu. The Prophet asks him. The Rahman, yeah, what does He do? He has Raham on those who have Raham. So if you're callous, hard-hearted, judgmental, a total pessimist, then how do you think Allah is going to judge you? You have nothing in you to judge. It's all you just a hatred. You seem to hate each other. So that's not the way forward. That's not inaba. So these, these are some values that I, I believe we should concentrate on, talk about, promote, and uh, inculcate in ourselves inculcate in our children, inculcate in our community. At the same time, make dua for Allah's rahmah, for Allah's maghfirah, for Allah to deliver us and all from the fire of hell in these Mubarak nights of Ramadan, and especially this night, the 29th, the last night, you never know. You never know when Allah is going to give you hidayah.
You never know when Allah is going to give you rahmah. You never know when Allah is going to give you love. So this night, which may be the last night, we still have time, even if for a few minutes, that we do the hajjah to make dua, and we do the to read the Quran, and then we hope for Allah's rahmah. In this world and also the next world. For who? For everybody. Not just for you, but for who? Everybody. The whole ummah. You want to take the whole Ummah with you in Jannah or you want to leave the Ummah behind you? What do you think? Are you going to be that selfish that only I can go in Jannah because only I am pious? No, you make dua for the whole Ummah. Which is the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu to make dua for the whole Ummah. So we will conclude here. We make dua. That Allah has raham upon us, Allah has given us maqirah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivers all of us from the fire of hell. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us from his eternal fathom so that we may benefit ourselves and benefit our people. Allah wa ta'ala 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 wa